All right, so I got a pretty wild take here for you guys from MSNBC's Joe Scarborough on the show Morning Joe, which is one of the shows that I have criticized a lot on this channel uh, because the host of the show, Joe Scarborough, is a Republican. He is a straight up uh, congressionally, former congressional Republican uh, from the state of Florida who now has a talk show where he talks about politics, uh, mainly from basically an establishment uh, anti-Trump Republican perspective. And so this take that I'm about to play for you guys here really kind of caught me out of left field. Like this was really surprising for me to hear uh, from a guy like Joe Scarborough. Scarborough, but nonetheless, not going to complain. This is probably the one time on this channel you will ever hear me uh, praising MSNBC or praising uh, Joe Scarborough. So without further ado, let's go ahead and listen to this rant uh, by Joe Scarborough on why taxing the rich uh, by the Democrats plan is nowhere even close to enough for what is actually needed. Democrats caution the proposal is likely to change. This is just out of one committee as it makes its way through Congress. Joe, so the top marginal tax rate is proposed to be raised to 39.6 from 37 percent. But that, as you know, doesn't get at the way the super wealthy and corporations make their money and avoid taxes. Well, and, and, and we see it every year. I, I don't understand what's going on when you have the people writing the tax bill for the Democrats saying they're concerned about moderates concerns. What do they want Jeff Bezos and Amazon to keep paying zero dollars in tax. Is that a moderate concern or is that actually a lobbyist's concern? Because over the past few years, there are corporations that have paid zero taxes in a year. Uh, and, and just over the past couple of years, that includes Amazon, Chevron, Avis, Delta, Eli Lilly, GM, Goodyear, Halliburton, Honey, oh Honeywell, IBM, Netflix, Occidental Petroleum, Owens Corning, Salesforce, U.S. Steel, last year, Archer Daniels, FedEx, Nike, on and on and on. Are, are moderates really concerned that those corporations may actually have to pay millions of dollars in tax? Because right now they're paying zero. And billionaires are continuing to figure out how to pay little or nothing. Hedge fund titans are paying taxes at lower rates than their clerical employees. And the people who chauffeur their Bentleys, you think that's demagoguery? You think that's popular? No, it's not. No, that's the fact. Billionaires capital, it doesn't get taxed. Workers wages do. And so now Democrats in Congress are saying we need to raise the taxes on people who are working, but leave billionaires alone as they continue to amass capital and continue. Listen to me here. Listen to me here because mm -hmm. everybody hates income redistribution. That makes you a socialist, doesn't it? If you're for a scheme that that redistributes wealth. Well, let me tell you something. And the world we've lived in over the past 40 years, there's been the largest income redistribution scam in American history. And it's been the middle class that's been looted while trillions keep flowing into the bank accounts of billionaires. Did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? This whole income redistribution thing we keep, oh, you can't raise taxes on people. Because that will be income redistribution. You're a socialist. Well, guess what? The very people who are saying that, the very people who are funding think tanks that'll say that, the very people that are paying lobbyists to get the message out to say that, the very people who are spending millions and millions of dollars on lawyers and lobbyists on K Street who are saying that, they're the people who have scammed you. They're the people whose monopolies continue to be untouched. They continue to be untouched all because they can buy the best lobbyists. They can buy the best lawyers. They can buy the best influencers on Capitol Hill, across Washington, D.C., and across Wall Street. Please, please, Democrats, do better than that. All right, so listen, you heard it from the man himself, Joe Scarborough, okay? Again, a guy who is effectively like a Mitt Romney-style Republican, at least uh, from what he was doing when he was congressionally elected in Florida and how he normally talks on his show. I would never have expected a take like this uh, from a guy like Joe Scarborough or really something on MSNBC unless you're hearing it from like, you know, maybe a Mehdi Hassan or an Ali Velshi or uh, a handful of the other tiny group of people who work at these corporate outlets that are actually willing to tell it like it is. And this is 
a perfect example of that. Pretty much everything he just said, word for word, in that entire clip is stuff that you could probably be hearing from this show, which is kind of wild. Like, that was all the shit that I usually bring up, specifically uh, with the uh, wealth transfer that he's talking about there. So this is a, a, a trend that we talk about a lot on this channel, which is like, you know, you can talk about redistribution of wealth from the wealthy to uh, middle class people to uh, working class people. Um, but what's actually happening in our passive system that we have had over the last number of decades of uh, rampant neoliberalism and conservatism has been exactly what he was just describing. We had that study that came out from the Rand Corporation, which literally described how uh, over the last number of decades, I think it was since the 1970s or mid 1970s, there has been an upward transfer of wealth from working class Americans to the top 1% uh, of upwards of 50 trillion dollars, which actually comes out to roughly like $1,400 per month every single month over the last four decades uh, to every single American outside of that top 1%. So we're not talking about like a tiny amount of money here that has been redistributed from working people to the very wealthy. We're talking about uh, trillions and trillions of dollars. What would $1,400 a month uh, mean to you in your life? I mean, obviously it's a ridiculously substantial amount of money and he actually brings that up and he actually talks about this. He's 100% right. It's not not moderate uh, to oppose uh, taxing capital gains. And that's another distinction that he did bring up there uh, successfully in that clip, right? There is a distinct one that, distinction that needs to be made between capital gains, which is where a lot of these people make actually a substantial portion of their money versus income. Okay. So the Jeff Bezos of the world, the Elon Musk, uh, the people who are actually sitting at the very top of the system who are hoarding the vast amount of wealth in this country are not doing that through their income, right? So as Joe Biden and Democrats are trying to push a raising of the income taxes, okay, Okay, that'll only go a certain extent when the vast majority of these people's wealth is in the stock market. And if you're not taxing capital gains, if you're not taxing their actual wealth in the stock market, then you're not really getting to the biggest meat of the issue, right? And so he's 100% right in talking about how pathetic it is that yes, Democrats are raising the income, uh, uh, highest income thresholds. And yes, they are raising the corporate income tax, even though it's not even going back to where it was under Obama. They're basically just half undoing the Trump tax cuts. So even what they are doing in terms of income, is um it is nowhere close to enough but he accurately pointed out in this clip that there needs to be a distinction why are working class americans paying more for the money that they are earning from a wage that they are working for uh than billionaires are uh, paying for taxes on the wall street speculation that they are doing um and making billions of dollars off it's just a completely ridiculous and perverse system and somehow uh, joe scarborough realizes this a literal moderate republican from florida realizes this better than the democratic party apparently